So in recent conversations, um, you know, when we talk about our, our entire value proposition, you, know, you talk about uh, control, optimize, reduce. These are things that you've heard me talk about before. You know, our control is the QS piece. It's the traffic prioritization. You know, making sure uh, some traffic types get certain minimum guarantees, etc. The optimize is the TCP optimization, where we make sure a single TCP connection can scale to very high speeds, regardless of latency loss. And reduction is, you know, is the is the velocity due to engine plus the compression plus the repeat byte suppression. So you heard, you heard me talk about this before, but uh, very recently in having talked to some very large internet properties, um, what we found out was in some cases, uh, some customers actually have a lot of bandwidth. So they can spend, because they have a lot of money, they can spend a lot of money, buy, buy a lot of bandwidth, but the problem that they are unable to solve is the TCP problem. So what ends up happening is they, they, they'll deploy a lot of bandwidth, in some cases multi-gigabit uh, bandwidth, and they expect to be able to push that much traffic between two sides at all times. Turns out, because, because of how TCP works, you cannot do that, and, and we can. So in some cases, just the optimized piece is big enough for customers to make a buying decision on. So with that in mind, I want to make sure I, I kind of talk about uh, what the issues are with TCP, and what uh, some of the things we are trying to do to make sure those problems do not become bottlenecks for your networks. So let me start with uh, some kind of um, uh, kind of basic understanding of what TCP is and what are the what are the uh, uh, bottlenecks that TCP sees before you know in 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 growing to higher speeds. So there's there's three things that are well understood that are impediments to what TCP can do. So the first one is latency. Latency is, I mean, in, 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 you know, in, in layman's terms, it's distance. The farther you, uh, you are from, uh, from between, you know, the, the, the farther the client is from the server, uh, the, 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 the less the speed is. Very simple. The farther you are, the slower you are. The second one is loss. Loss is really a function of how much data, uh, as a percentage over time, do you stand to lose, and this is typically in terms of packets. So uh, in, a, in a TCP IP transaction, you're sending packets. Over time, some of those packets will be what they call dropped. Um, and that average of, of how many drops happen over a certain period of time, that is, it, it ends up impeding the traffic. And the reason why that happens is because every time you have a dropped packet, uh, what TCP, the sender, what, needs, what the sender needs to do is retransmit either that packet or a bunch of other packets along with that packet. Uh, and that adds to the overhead of, uh, of speed and speed just drops. That's number two. The third one is, is what they call a, uh, just a buffer, or a, you know, let's call it a socket buffer. This is a function of how much data can I collect from the application before I send it out there. Uh, the larger the buffer, the more data you can have on the wire. Okay? So these are three things that people talk about when they talk about issues. So let me kind of uh, look at each one of them in a little bit more detail and, uh, and let's see you know, where we end up with in terms of TCP. So, so latency, as I mentioned, latency is a function of distance. Now the way TCP works is uh, you send a, a, a window of data and a window of data would be a, a, you know, a certain number of bytes that are sent over from the client to the server or, or vice versa in terms of packets. At a time, you can only send a certain window of data. That's how TCP works. So let's say a window of data happens to be, I'll pick a number, 128 kilobytes. So what you do is you take 128 kilobytes from the application. Let's say the application happens to be an FTP transfer. So you start an FTP transfer and you're doing a, a send of data. Okay, so you're doing a, a, a put. In that case, you'll take a, at a time 128 kilobytes of whatever the file was that you're trying to FTP and you'll send it across. Once the entire 128 kilobytes gets to the other side, you get an acknowledgement of some sort which says, it's all done. Then you send the next one. And then you wait for the other side to tell you, I've got all of that data, and then you send the next one, it's that, you know, and so on and so forth. Now the issue with that is, if the distance is large enough, it will take you longer to find out that the data got to the other side. So if you keep increasing the distance, the impact of the response is actually exponential. So if you were to draw a graph of what the impact is of latency, this is what it would look like. So let's say this the x-axis is distance. 
you can think of this in terms of miles, uh, uh, typically network guys think in terms of milliseconds of latency, but you know, it's all the same thing. The idea is how long does it take for data to get to the other side and come back uh, versus throughput. Throughput. This could be in megabits per second, gigabits per second, whatever. If you were to draw this graph, what you would see is, is an exponential drop as distance increases. And it's actually pretty dramatic. If you're running a gigabit link, if you go, you know, five, six milliseconds, and typically you can, a good way to kind of think about milliseconds is uh, um, one millisecond latency is about 30 miles. So if you go, say, 90 miles, which is three milliseconds, it's one gigabit, it's going to drop to probably five, six hundred megabits. It, that's, it's that drastic. If you were to go coast to coast, which is about 80 milliseconds, so you go from, say, LA to New York, that one gig, if you don't do any optimization, it's probably going to drop to maybe five megabits. So you bought a link, which is a gigabit link. You thought you would get a gigabit throughput. You're not gonna. You're gonna get about five, six, maybe 10 megabits of throughput. That's really bad. So uh, typically network guys, they plan around the speed of the link, but the TCP becomes a bottleneck. So that's latency. Loss has a very similar story. And the, the thing about loss is, um, so I was talking about a Windows before, right? A window of data that TCP is sending. So let's say we to go back to the same example. Let's say I have 128 gigab uh, kilobytes of data to send per window. Now what happens is, as I'm sending this window in terms of packets, some of those packets may be lost. When a certain packet in a window is lost, I have to retransmit that packet in the best case or everything that follows that packet in that window, which is really bad. So, so think of it this way. Let me just uh, clean this up. And let's say this is my window of data. Okay? And it's broken up into one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five packets. I start sending packets in order. So I send packet one. Packet two, packet three, packet four, packet five. Now, in that process, let's say packet three was dropped. It got lost somewhere. Some queue got, or, or you know, or some queue overflowed on on some router in the path. Who knows what happened? Because three was lost, firstly I have to wait to find out that three was lost. And the way I find out is either the the receiver can tell me explicitly that I lost three, which is which is typically you know that, that takes a very advanced setup. Typically, what happens is the receiver will say. I, I, I got two, I got four, and but I didn't get three. So you have to retransmit three. Or what could happen is it says, I, the last thing I saw was two, I haven't seen anything since. Okay, so either you have to retransmit three or you have to retransmit three, four, and five, which is the worst case scenario. Now, this is obviously, this is a, this is a pretty simple example. This could be a huge window and you could have many, many pieces of data in that window. Um, so every time you lose a packet, you, ha you end up on average retransmit retransmitting about half that window. Because of that retransmission, the actual throughput for the sender keeps dropping. And again, if you were to plot the relationship between loss and throughput, as I did for latency before, it's very similar. Actually, in some cases, it's worse. Uh, so this is uh, throughput in megabits per second, gigabits per second, and this is loss. Exponential. You have a little bit of loss, your throughput drops, like, it, like you know, like, like everything is gone. I mean, you, so people, uh, you know, they ask the question, you know, what is, what is acceptable loss, etc. cetera. Here's the, here's the way to think about it. If you have 1% loss on a gigabit link, you're probably running at about a few megabits per second. You just lost 99.7% of your throughput just because you have 1% loss. 1% is very high. On an internet VPN, typically you would see, you know, 0.01% loss, which is, which seems pretty small, actually it's pretty high, because the higher speed is, the, the, even the small number has a huge impact um, on, on, uh, on uh, you know, dedicated, high SLA, very good premium links, you, you would see 0.001% loss and so on. Uh, you know, I'm sure our, some of, many of our larger customers, at least in the banking sector, have very good links with the high SLAs and they'll have uh, pretty low loss. But some of our other customers who maybe you know, are using uh, you know, MPLS uh, LSPs or, or internet VPNs, they may have reasonably high loss, let's say in the 0.05 range. Those customers, regardless of what their throughput is, they're not getting, they're not getting any use of that link. And that's bad, right? So basically their investment is not, is not, you know, it's not doing anything with them. They're spending a lot of money, they're not getting anything out of it. That's loss. Now let's talk about buffer. Or window, or whatever you want to call it. So really the idea here is, 
can I receive enough data from the application such that I can fill a link? So the application sends me data, I take that data and I push it across the wire. If the distance is large, so the, so the, so the, uh, the, the theory is that if the distance is large, then my buffer should be large. If the buffer is large enough, I will fill that entire link with data. So, so let's visualize that for a minute. So let's say this is a van link. This is the amount of data I need to fill that link. Um, so the, the, this concept is referred to as something called a bandwidth delay product. So my bandwidth times my delay is the amount of data I need to have in a buffer to fill this link. Makes a lot of sense, right? However, if I use a very, very large, let's say my buffer is extremely large. Okay, typically when buffers are large, what you want to do is, you know, your windows are also going to be large. So let's say you have a very large buffer and your window is a megabyte or whatever, right? So the larger the window, the more susceptible to you are to loss. So even though you have, you know, you have, you solve the latency problem by having a large buffer and large, you know, basically a large bandwidth delay product. If you have loss, you will be dropping more data and consequently retransmitting more data. And that's going to have sometimes even a worse impact. So sometimes this thing makes actually things worse. So you have to be really careful about that. So um, this solving this problem on a server is very easy. So a lot of customers say, you know what, uh, I know how to use Linux. Uh, I'll just go to Proxys and I'll just use a very large uh, socket buffer. No problem. Actually, that sometimes makes things worse depending on how much your link is like. So just by, just, just by solving that problem on a server, it's not going to solve your problem. What you really need to think about is, how do I solve all three problems? So again, the, the three problems are latency, loss, and uh, you know, you know how big my buffer is. How, how do I solve all of the problems that TCP may, may have? One shot. The, so it looks like the, the, the right way to do this is to use a transparent TCP proxy, which can look at all connections in the network and make decisions for each one of those connections at the same time and make the right decision because it knows what the band looks like at this time. And you know, coincidentally, that's what we do. That's what our optimization uh, piece does in our product. So what it, what it does is it takes all the connections coming in from the LAN side, it can make decisions about what the WAN looks like right now because there are two boxes on each end. If you recall, this is a symmetric solution we're talking about. You have a box on each end. They, between the two, have a good sense for what the WAN is right now and they can make a better decision about what to retransmit and what not to retransmit. Uh, when you make better decisions about the WAN, what you can do is you can allow the application to run much faster and more importantly, you, can, you protect the application from what is going on in the WAN. So as far as the application is, is concerned, latency is small and loss does not exist. When you make that if, happen, what you're doing is you're allowing the application to, to react much faster when, every time there is there's throughput available. That is something that we can do for customers that they cannot do on their own for sure. And uh, and and uh, we can basically protect them from the from the impact of latency and loss. I mean, to the to the tone of uh, uh, one customer that, that I talked to very recently, they have a single connection, so they're doing a SQL log transfer from you know from the West Coast to the East Coast for for data uh, for disaster recovery. What's going on is they they, they basically put together a, a, a one gigabit WAN. Uh, the expectation was that I have a gigabit WAN, I, I can push one gigabit per second, and all will be well. Turned out, they, can, they get about 10 megabits on that link, regardless of what they do. Bad solution, right? So what we can do for them is we can make that connection run at a gigabit, right? Nothing else can. So now they can actually do the, do the, do the simple math and say, okay, I have a gigabit link, I have a gigabit connection, and this is how long it should take for me to move, move say, a terabyte of data. That's simple math. Relying on TCP or rather the you know the native TCP to make these decisions for you turns out it's not the best of ideas. You know, there's a better way to do it, which is what we're doing. Uh, so that that's that's t that's TCP optimization again. TCP optimization on its own solves a very important problem: uh, latency, loss, what have you. The the van uh, impediments, uh, which become bottlenecks for TCP, we can we, we we seem to do a very good job of solving those problems. Uh, there are customers who have enough bandwidth, but cannot make use of that bandwidth, and we allow them to use whatever the bandwidth happens to be: one gig, ten gig, whatever. We can solve all those problems.